guitar practice session 10, 13, 24. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on, hoping it generates a routine for me, it helps me to verbalize what I'm trying to learn to get it in my mind better, possibly providing information to others working on similar things, possibly also providing for feedback if anybody sees a better way to try to get this stuff in my head than what I'm doing here. I do think doing the practice sessions as though you're trying to present the information to someone else is useful because it helps to verbalize the information in a way you might not do otherwise. So if you want to take this worksheet and make your own types of practice sessions with them, don't worry about the plagiarism or anything like that. If they're useful to you, you can you know manipulate the worksheet and mess with them however you so choose. We do have another course or section on how to create the worksheet if you want to see how to manipulate it uh, more easily. But in any case, the structure of it might be a little bit different than whether worksheets you've seen elsewhere in that we're going to try to orientate everything from the perspective of playing the guitar from behind the guitar. So if you implanted the guitar on the screen, you'd have the top string on top, top to bottom, left to right, orientated the same way as your fretboard from behind the fretboard. And I'm going to flip my guitar around on the screen so it will also look like low string on top, top to bottom, left to right, orientated as the guitar you're holding and the worksheet here so that we could try to just be able to navigate around all of the notes in the worksheet as easily as possible without spending too much mental energy flipping the fretboard around all over the place to see where we are at. So we're going to be thinking about uh, the Dorian mode once again, which I call uh, the mode number two, absolute mode number two in what I would call position uh, number five. We are this time going to be looking at this D, however, in this position and going around the horn back to this D. I don't get that far, though, because I'm spending a lot more time uh, trying to build uh, chords uh, within each of the positions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say we're going to go from the D, we're going to go back to the one behind it, which is going to be the seventh, and see that it should be a 10 note away minor seventh. And now that we've learned some of these intervals, I then want to be thinking about how I can use those to build a chord based on this information. So now that I know that that would be related to the Ionian mode, has all of the intervals of the Ionian mode, then I could build uh, my, my chords on it, which I would start off by doing just a major third triad because it would be a major chord versus a minor chord and then add things like the 7, 9, 11, and 13, reiterating in my mind that all of these notes are going to be uh, equivalent to the mode, in this case the Ionian mode, or if I was in the Aeolian or the Mixolydian, all of these notes are constructing the Mixolydian uh, scale. It's just that the numbering system is skipping every other note. So I have, this is the two, the nine is equivalent to, uh, uh, the, this is the one, the nine is equivalent to the two, this is the three, the 11 is equivalent to the four, this is the five, the 13 is equivalent to the six, and then here is the seven. So then I'm going to actually go to, if like if I was on the Mixolydian, we'll then jump over to the Mixolydian and think about that position and think about the 1, 3, 5, which are orientated uh, or color-coded. That's why I'm going to go to them because they're color-coded in that way. And then we'll think about adding to it the 7, 9, 11, and 13. So once you start getting in the weeds of all the different variants that we can play within the chords, at least for me, at least for now, it takes me a while to kind of mull that over. Uh, so I'm going to spend a, a good deal of time doing that. So we only get through like the top bit uh, of uh, the shape. And then we kind of analyze the different chords and the different fingerings for the different chords and how we might see it by interval and so on and so forth. I tell a joke somewhere uh, in there. And that's basically the whole the whole session. I'm thinking I'm going to be trying to concentrate on that more and just get better, more efficient at that. Continuing on with what I would call shape number five, looking at what I would call mode number two, that being the Dorian mode. Remembering that we're going to be using an absolute mode numbering system based on the major scale or Ionian mode. Let's look at the major scale or Ionian mode for reference. We've got our relative positions one through seven on the left 
representing the seven positions out of the 12 notes. We have the actual notes related to those positions here. We're gonna be in the key of C, so there's no sharps or flats. Same notes for all of the related modes, but we're not focused on memorizing the notes in the key of C. We're more focused on looking at the relative position, which we could think about as modes, because those are the things that are gonna be movable even when we go from the key of C to the key of G and related modes, uh, for example. So most people then learn within a major scale how to construct the major chords and the minor chords by the numbering system in the major scale. So we start to learn that the one, four, five, if I build a chord on them, will be a major chord, which a major third, and the two, three, and six, if I build a chord out of those notes, I'm gonna have a minor chord with a minor third, and the seventh will have a locrian, which is a, which is a flat fifth and a minor third. So that is great, very practical. What we would like to learn beyond that, however, is to say, if I can see the actual mode, I can build more complex chords rather than just having the major or minor third, which I can't really do. I can, I can learn all those complex chords, but I don't really know if they're gonna fit in the key that I'm working in if I don't know the related modal structure. If I know the, the modes, then I can build the entire chord like building a scale with the intervals and have some idea of whether that chord actually fits in the key that I'm in. Not everything has to fit in the same key, but it would be good to know when and when not I want something to be fitting in a key uh, or not. So the idea here is that we're gonna be using a numbering system to name the modes. The numbering system is gonna be based on the major scale's relative position. So I'm gonna call the Ionian mode or the major scale the first mode. It's, it's got a Roman numeral capitalized uh, because it is <clears throat> uh, a, a major mode. We'll have a major chord related to it. And then the Dorian's mode two, the, the Phrygian's mode three, and so on and so forth. Then when I go to another mode, I'm now looking at the Dorian. We're still gonna have the relative positions one through seven. We still have the same actual notes over here, but the ordering of the notes are different. I have to order the notes different because I wanna be able to interpret the mode by interval, which is based on the first note in the key. So that's, that's useful to do. However, it messes up my whole concept of when do I play a major chord or a minor chord if I'm talking about the one of the Dorian, the two of the Dorian, the three of the Dorian, and so on. So one way to think about that is to try to tie it back to the major scale, which we hopefully have more memorized, where I know at least I know the one, four, five will be major, the two, three, and six will be minor. And that's where the absolute mode numbering system comes in. And we can use some simple math to get those relative positions to the major, which will help us to know at least, should I build a major chord or minor chord? If you don't do that, what ends up happening is you start playing all the time in the key of C and possibly you, you learn the minor, but you're really scared to go into the other modes or at least think of them as a different mode. You, you, could, you can kind of get around it by thinking of like you're playing a different mode, the Dorian mode, but I'm just gonna call it mode number two and just play around mode number two. That works fine, but when I try to start to actually list the intervals, then it's gonna be a problem because I'm gonna list the intervals as they relate to that particular mode. So that's, that's what we're trying to basically orientate ourselves <clears throat> around in the Dorian. So we, now we have the relative positions for the Dorian. We've got then the modes that are gonna be na named based on the numbering system of the relative major. We've got the intervals remembering that with the intervals, we would recommend first learning the major intervals and then learning the minor intervals as they compare to the major intervals, the major intervals being our Rosetta Stone, our point of reference, and then learning the related major and minor modes as they are compared to their related main major and main minor scales, the Ionian or major scale and the Aeolian or minor scale, noting that then you'll only have one interval that will be different, one distinctive interval. So that's kind of the, it takes a little while to do it that in that order, but if you do it in that order, it's kind of like the easiest way to, to learn all these different uh, modes. And that's what I've been doing. And I feel like I'm getting a, more and more of a grasp if you do a little bit of it each day. So now what are the, what are the intervals here? So I'm gonna go through the intervals 
up here in in this position because this is what I would call the the position for the Dorian mode uh, up here with the D at the top just to make it easy just to walk through these intervals quickly so we have the perfect first that would just be the the string itself and then we've got then the uh, two note away major second so even though it's a minor mode you have a major second and that's normal that's what what would be in the main minor mode that's the one kind of weird one and then we have the three note away minor third that's the distinctive interval making it a minor versus a, a major it's three notes away and by the way minor third should mean that it should trigger in my mind that it's three notes away but if i'm not on a piano i can't really see it i can see it here because i'm playing like a piano because i'm just playing on one string but once i'm on two strings us guitarists lose track of the measuring stick because our ruler is broken out into multiple strings multiple rulers right so it's and they're offset from each other so it's going to be so that means that it's useful to me to say it's a three note away that's how many half steps minor third the part of the third here means it's the third position within our our scale which is why we have to reorientate the scale when we're playing in dorian so the dorian is number one because all the intervals are based on the dorian being number one right and then we've got the uh, five note away perfect fourth so perfect fourth is the fourth here perfect is the same in the major and the minor and then five notes away are the distance of the notes that's where it's right on top of each other and then we've got the the uh the seven note away perfect fifth seven note away perfect fifth the seven is the distance in half steps the perfect fifth means it's the fifth uh uh the fifth and the fact that it's a perfect fifth should tell me that it's a distance of seven notes, but I'm going to say it anyways. And that's our power chord. Same on the major and the minor. The perfects are the same on the major and the minor. And here's where the Dorian deviates from the main minor Aeolian by having a distinctive sixth interval where we have a major six instead of a minor six, which is nine note away, major six. So looks like that. And uh, so then we have then the uh, 10 note away minor seven for the Dorian and then the octave. So that's gonna be our uh, intervals that we will be working with. And so we're gonna be in position number five. So I'm actually gonna be down here, which you might call, I call it position five, why? because I generically call this position one like a lot of people do. And that would be then if that's position one, there's only five positions. The positions behind it then must be position five. And I'm gonna call it, you could also call it the mixolydian position because if I was to play it from this string, I would be playing in or from the top of the position, I would be playing in mixolydian. Uh, you also might call it Re, the, the related major is the key of C and so if I find my C in this position it's right there so I could call it an A shaped A caged shape position remembering that if you use the caged shape positions you want to first think about fitting that shape into the pentatonic five note because it will fit uniquely and then add the two notes otherwise that shape will fit in more than one seven note position of our five positions right so and then so then the question is i'm going to start on the d uh within this position so the question would then be well how do i know where the dorian is within this position which will not always be a d uh note that just happened to work out uh here so it's but it's the dorian position that's the note number six which i'm called call the sixth note is a d so i'm going to say uh, I could count up and say, well, I know that, that the mixolydian is the fifth of the related major, and I'm comparing everything to the major scale. I want to get to the second of the relative major. So how can I get maybe to the, to the top of the major? I can go around from five, if that's five, six, seven, eight. That means that this C right there, that's, not, that's the first again. And then one, two. So there's my second, so that must be the Dorian. That's where the Dorian's going to start, which means I can also name this position by, by each of the starting points of the mode. So I might call it one, two, three, four, five, the fifth note in the position Dorian shape. 
Most people won't call it that, but I'd like to be able to name each shape by where each of the modes start. Might not be as useful here, but I think it is quite useful if you're in like position number two, where the, the major starts on the second note. So most people would call that a major position, but if you started on the first note, it would be a Locrian because you'd be playing around this Locrian area, whereas you wanna be playing here, that's gonna be the second note in the position. Uh, the same happens in position number four, which could be Lydian major shape versus uh, the Phrygian on the minor shape. All right, and then I could ask, okay, well, how can I, another way I can find that D is I can look at my two ways to see the fretboard uh, within the shape, breaking the five note, the five string instrument plus an added E string into a, a two string, two string, one string shape or a three string, two string shape. So the two string, two string, one string shape is what I would call a, a seven note house analogy shape where we have the house double stop, the double stop house, which is shifted up because of the fault line in between these strings and the two note per string flat. So within that shape, the, the Dorian is not in the house. I imagine it as C major's house, right? And Dorian is a minor, so it's not in the house. The only one in the house that's a that's a that's a minor is the Phrygian in the basement. So it's over here on the double stop side, and then it's also when we get to the to the double stop box or double stop house, it's on the bottom of the double stop. Okay, if I go to the hamburger barbell analogy, which is the pentatonic shape, which is outlined by this green and purple shapes, then uh, it is in the hamburger. So the hamburger might be easier to see over here where it's not cut in half, meaning the Dorian is on the top uh, left and bottom right bun. It encompasses the entire hamburger or the shape of the hamburger. Uh, and so that's gonna be where uh, the Dorian lives. You can see here it's on the bottom bun. This is the meat of the hamburger, which repeats down here because there's two E strings. And then here's the top bun of uh, the hamburger. Okay, so that's gonna be our starting point. And so now we're gonna go from, uh, what did we do the last time we went from here around, I'm gonna go from this D back around to this D using that as our focal point and measuring our, our uh, everything to that or intervals to that. And then as we do that, I'll try to add the idea of making chords. I want to spend more time making chords on each of those positions to see the different ways I might construct a chord on each of the notes as we go through each string, right? So that's what we'll think about. So now I'm on uh, this D. So, well, one, one more thing I might do. F well, let's go through, let's just go through it. So we're on this D, Let's, let me play through it real quick. If I go from here on up, because normally I play this shape from the top, G to G, right? But now I'm on this D, so now I'm playing it Dorian. So it goes. So wait a second, I don't wanna mess it up. So just playing it from in playing that shape in the Dorian, playing it through is not something I'm totally used to doing. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, and then in terms of, let's just go through the positions now. So I'm gonna go back to here. That's what I wanna, that's what I'm interested in right now. So we're gonna go from the, this is the eight back to the seven. So if I go from the eight back to the seven, then the seven is gonna be the uh, Locrian uh, shape, or it's the, the seventh of the Dorian has an interval of a 10 note away minor seven. How do I know that? Because if I went this way, this is where the inverses are useful because if I go from 
C to D, I could see it's two notes away. That would be a two note away major second. And therefore D to C is 12 minus two, which is a 10 note away minor seven, which I can prove by going to like a D here and counting up 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I get to a C. Okay, so then I also know that the the seventh of the Dorian is I can take my my second. I know that the the Dorian is the second of the major, so it's the second of the major, which means if I start on the major, it's one step away, which means I can take whatever note whatever I'm on Dorian minus one is one because it's one step away plus the related position of seven gives me eight. There's only seven modes. Eight minus seven is one. Therefore, I get number one, which is the related major. So the related major, uh, the related major would be the position one. And I know then that I would build a chord off of this C, which would be a major chord, which would have a major third because the one, four, five, of the major would build a major chord and i know beyond that that it's actually the ionian mode so it has all the intervals of a major or ionian mode okay so that's useful so then where does it live in the house analogy it's in the it's in the the box the top penthouse of the house looking towards the ocean up here and then in the hamburger analogy it's in the bottom left corner kind of like the base, the main supporting beam in my imagination of the hamburger. Okay, so let's think about building chords from it. Most people, if I was gonna build a chord from this string, I'm on the top two strings, so we would typically think we're gonna build a bar chord, which would be an A-shaped bar chord, which is the, the shape you might, from a cage system, name the whole shape after. So that's uh, useful. So then, it, so that's, so I have that. If I wanted, now if I wanted to add to that then and say, well, what, what can I, what, oh, by the way, uh, the way I was gonna do this is, so now I'm on the C, so I could go, let's look at, cause what I've done is I've, I've colored these one, three, five here. So let's, let's go up here and just look at it. This is the same shape, but now this is in the key of the major, which is focused on the Ionian. So remember the idea here is that the Ionian, these notes, these notes on the Dorian right here are the 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13, which is the same as saying it's the 1, and then the 2 is the 9, and then the 3, and then the 4 is the 11, and then the 5, uh, and then the 6 is the 13, and then the 7. There's seven notes, meaning this is just the C major scale labeled in a little bit different of an order, but it's still just one through seven notes, except for the nine, 11, and 13 are equivalent to the two, the four, and the six. So if I go back up here, look, notice that these right here are the same as these right here. And I wanna go up here because now I've got my shape that's got the one, three, five that are colored uh, uh, in uh, the one being green, the three being red, and the five being uh, orange. So now you can see if I, if I make it the one, same shape, same notes, but now we're in the major scale, I have C through B here. And then again, this is still C through B going this way, which is still in the same order. It's just that I have the one is the C, then the two, which is the nine is equivalent to the two. And then the three is the E, and then the four is equivalent to the 11 right and then the uh five is the g and then the six is equivalent to the 13 and then the seven is the b so just trying to remember in my mind that the these modes when i see the modes going this way it's the same it's the same thing as if i went to the other modes this is the mo this is the modal scale of phrygian same numbering system except that we skip every other node and we keep on going up to, to nine modes all right given that if i look at that here the reason i want to do that is because if i look at that uh on this one i'm gonna cut i'm gonna cut and and paste then now i have my c here which is in green and it's easier to see because i have my color coding it's green there's my fifth 
in yellow and there's another green and there's my uh my third okay all right so given that so if i have that shape so i so i think there's two ways i can go from here i can say okay look at all these other colors any of the things that has a color in it i can add to it if i could reach it right that's one way to look at it or if i and that's kind of cheating right or I could try to say, well, let me add something like the seven. Where where would the seven be? Well, if I'm looking at this C and I'm looking for a seven, notice I'm looking for a major seven. So so usually that would be like like uh, the the B, like right here, right before it gets there. So there's a there's a B right there. So there's a seven, a major seven. So if I played something like that. That's useful to know. And that's perfect because notice what I have here. I already have a C. I don't really need this C, so I can remove that C and then add the seven. Notice that seven is different. The position would be different if I was on Mixolydian, which has a minor seven. That's why I need to know which mode I'm in if it's gonna fit in the same related Dorian uh, key. So then I could say, okay, let's see if I can, where's a, like a nine in here? So, so I could say, and how do I know that, se that seven should be an 11 note away major seven, right? So it's five, 10, 11, okay? And then I could say, all right, well, let's add like uh, a nine. So a nine, we have a D. And so the nine is equivalent to the two, right? Uh, let's put that here. The nine is equivalent to the two. So I could say, okay, where's a nine? I have this D right here, but I can't really play that at the same time. I could like let go of this E and then play like that one. Wait a sec. So now I've, now I've lost the third if I do that, right? I lost the third and I picked up a nine. And then it's going to be hard for me not to play the G when I do that as well, which is going to be another fifth, but that's cool. Is there a way I can do that while still picking up the E? Well, I could go like, I could try to go like back to this, this one. And be like, all right, could I do it like, could I do it like, here's the C, here's the third, and then the nine. It's gonna be that D and then and then now I'm missing the fifth, which would be here. So I could do something like that and lose the fifth. And I'll try to I could try to mute this string, although I could leave it open because that's an open G. And that would the G is the is another fifth. So there's the fifth right there. It's an open G. That doesn't work anywhere else but here. I'm cheating with an open string, but it's nice to knit. That's good. All right. So and anyways, what if I wanted to add like the 11th, which is an F. So I'm going to like the 11 and saying, okay, what if I wanted to like throw an F in there? Uh, the 11, the 11 is equivalent to the four. So that means that there's going to be a four right below it. That's when my normal four position is. So if I, that what's that gonna do that's gonna uh, that's gonna lose that means I lose the fifth right here but if I can borrow it all the way down I could still pick up that fifth down here so I could say like maybe here here that's I need this third to kind of finish it out and then I've got my fifth down here so maybe I do something like that so now it's like and then I just have these two no wait, that's the fifth. I need, I need. Uh, here's my C right under the, and then these two. So that would be. It's still got everything in it to be a C because it's got the one, three, five. But then I've added a four. So it's kind of nice. I could switch. Notice all the combos I have here. I've got like, okay, a normal A, 
and then I've got the A with a 7 in it. And now I've got this shape where I could, I could add a 4th. So those are all variants that might give a little bit more color that you can just play even just with all that, just with that. And then we've got the the 13, which is equivalent to uh, the 6, right? The 13 is equivalent to the 6. So the 6 would be a 9 note away major 6, which normally I think of it being back here, right? Which is a little bit difficult to throw in there. So there's a there's a 6 uh, if I if I threw that in there, so I could get, I could grab that and still grab like my, uh, my fifth. So I could go, I could drop the third, which is, I hate to do, but you know, I could do something like this and say, I drop the third and now I pick up the, that. So I'm picking up this, G over here and then I could try to pick up the third right so now I've got the the C the one the three and so now this way I'm dropping I'm dropping if I go from here So now I'm dropping the the fifth and I'm picking up the 13. So anyway, so I have that. All right, let's try a lean back shape. So so if I was to lean it back, then I'd say okay, now I'm picking up whoa, hold on. Oh man. So now I'm picking up if I was to lean it back, that's just my C shape. So here's the one, here's the three, here's the five. That's my normal C shape. And then I could start playing with that C shape and say, okay, we've probably added things to that C shape uh, uh, before, right? Just normally, like we're like, oh, I'll put my pinky down. But then the question is, does that fit in the, <laughs> in the chord that I'm playing, in the D Dorian that I'm playing, which is related to the C major? Well, we can start to analyze that, right? We could say, okay, well, what if I wanted to add? So there's, so now I've got the one, three, five, and another five. Let it, let's say I add the seven. Now notice that that the seven compared to this C uh, would be a major seven, which normally I'm thinking like right there, right? So that's a little bit tough to grab. Not too bad but usually we're thinking back here, which would be a minor seven, right? So I could try to grab that. So I'm like, boom, to here. So it's doable, but it's a little uncomfortable. If this was, if this was a dominant or you're playing the blues, do you pick up the minor seven, which is a lot more comfortable? Not in the key. Uh, if we played the fifth, it would be in the key, right? If I went up to the, to the, to the, to, to the related G shape. So here's a, a G shape, uh, a C shape G. I played it like that. Then I could put my finger down here because it would be boom, boom boom and then my finger is my pinky is going right there right and that's in the shape but it's not in this shape because the seven interval is a major seven for the one and the four and it's a minor seven for the five okay what if i added like a like the d 
uh, which is the 9. The 9 is equivalent to the 2. So if I'm on my shape here, my C shape, and I'm trying to add a D, I know the D most easily is right there, but so I could reach for it. I could be like... So it's something I could slide to. So that's useful to know. If I wanted to, uh, where's another D? So then the D is going to be down here. That's going to be a little bit. I could drop the added C here and grab the D. So I could be like, could be like, do do, and then this one on the B string. Like go from the C. Now when I play that, I'm I'm I have the open chord of a G open, but that's cool. And then another open E, and that's cool. Okay. So that's interesting. And then we've got then the uh, three, uh, which is. Uh, what am I doing? No, I'm on. Let's look for an, an, an 11, which is equivalent to the fourth, right? So if I'm on this C shape, I'm looking for uh, the 11, uh, uh, the 11, which is equivalent to the fourth, is right underneath it again. So it's right underneath it. Then I would lose. If I did that, I would lose the third. I have another third on the open string down here. So if I grab that one, maybe I can, I can play these two, and then an open G, and then get that open E at the bottom or at the top. Put that open E at the top here, and or the bottom. So then I can throw the fourth in there. And then I could say, well, what about the 13, which is an A? So if I go back to this one and say, okay, what about like the A? Uh, an A what is the 13, which is equivalent to the nine. So normally if I looked at the C, I would think of a nine as being like back here, which is a little wonky to grab because I'm, I'm already grabbing so I'd have to move, so I could move this third down to here, grab the nine. So it's, there's a C, now I'm grabbing the nine. And again, I, if I add the E at the top, I still have a third in it or the E at the bottom. So those are all variations I can do on the C which are in there. So once again, C here. I add the I add this one, the seven, which is a major seven. I can do that. Back to here. I can then switch this down to the, to the A to get that thirteen. Add the E on top of it. And I could add, of course, the C like this, meaning a normal C. And then instead of having the open E or muting the E, I put this G in it. Which is a little bit easier to move sometimes. But, but so then if I think so so that's gonna be let's let's stop it there. I think I've kind of overkilled this one. Let's go to the next one, shall we? Let's go back to the uh, to back to the Dorian. So I'm in the Dorian and I'm thinking, okay, now we're gonna go from uh, this back to the to the six. So back to the six. Let's first go to a joke though. A little break here, a little break, a little joke. All right, <clears throat> practice session joke. Why is it that crap is generally considered uh, unscary? You know, if some like crap is not scary, it's basically the opposite of scary, except when crap is in the shape of an O. Because for some reason, 
whenever the whenever the crap is in the shape of an oh you got you've got people yelling all the time oh crap oh crap and it's like it's like ne they're, they're never yelling square crap triangle crap you know scatter plot crap you know that's not how it works it's all it's always oh crap so honestly what what is it about the o shape that that turns normal mundane crap into something to scream oh crap about you know you know what i'm you know what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna dress up as oh crap for halloween that'll scare the crap out of people and that's fine if my oh crap costume scares the crap out of people as long as the crap that's scared out of them doesn't take the shape of an o because my goodness what if my oh crap costume has ends up spawning a bunch of other oh craps that wouldn't be good to terrorize the world and how is it how is it i'll be like at the end of the night i'll be like how is it i didn't win the scariest costume award from my oh crap costume honestly all night long people have been pointing at me saying oh crap and and i you know and i don't see anybody else's I don't see I don't I don't see the same kind of oh crap reaction to anybody else's costume. I should be winning the scariest costume award hands down. Everybody's been looking at me like oh crap. So I that which is what people do when they're scared. Okay, that's it. That was my joke. Ah. Uh, yeah, you need more practice. Okay, I'm practicing. I thought it was pretty good. I'm going to go down to the, let's go down to the sixth now. And we're going to say, okay, the sixth of the Dorian is uh, a, uh, a, a nine note away major six. Nine note away major six. How do I know that? Because if I went from this B up to here, it would be a three note away minor third. The inverse is 12 minus 3, which is a 9 note away, uh, major 6. So if I went from here to here, B to D, 3 note away, major 3rd, therefore the inverse, D to B, 9 note away, major 6. We also know that the 6th of mode number 2, Dorian, is mode 2, minus 1 is 1, plus relative position 6 gives me the mode 7 or relative position 7 to the major scale which i know i would construct a diminished chord or avoid it a lot of people do <laughs> because it would construct a diminished chord which has a minor third and a flat fifth to it uh, and beyond that that is i know the locrian mode mode number seven uh, the Locrian mode. Where's the Locrian mode located in the house analogy? It's on the back of the house in the box. It's on the back uh, of the box. And if we went from a seven note house analogy to a five note pentatonic, we would remove that shape, part of the shape, and this part of the shape, which represents the two L modes, the Locrian mode and the Lydian mode. And then in the hamburger barbell pentatonic shape, it would be out just outside of uh, the hamburger. This is the hamburger that you can see that's not broken in half. And there's the added little bit on the bottom bun next to the C, giving it a little bit more support, especially if we had to put a hat on it up top, right? So it has a little Z that's connected to the top buns going to the right and bottom bun going to the left, okay? So uh, to, now I'm not gonna spend a lot of time constructing a chord off of this, I could. Maybe later I'll do that, but the major bit on this on this chord to be aware of is that it's got that flat uh, fifth on it. Uh, and and let me go down just to check it out. If I went down to like Locrian down here, I didn't copy my whole sheet. Yeah, I did. So if I go down to Locrian, then we could do the same thing here. I don't spend a lot of time on Locrian down here, but we could say there's my B would be the root now, and then the third is a minor third uh, which you could see back here is an open note but the key to the locrian is really the flat fifth right so it's got that flat fifth so as long as you get that flat fifth in there that's going to give you the leading tone back to the c so i have i have uh, that flat fifth here and then i have a third which could be on the b string which is picking up this d down here 
ba boom so there we have that and then uh the seventh uh is an a which oftentimes is added so you see this shape oftentimes where people play it like this right because that adds even a little bit more kind of tension but really what you really need is just this shape anytime i see that shape unless it's going over the fault line i'm thinking that's giving me some tension all right that's the little bit of attention we'll give to the locrian now we'll put we'll leave it back in the attic for now maybe we'll bother it later locrian's good but you know it's you don't you don't want to mess with it too much mess with them you'll go so then we're going to go back to the the a which is the fifth so we're going to go to the a so we've got we're on this d uh, we're on this d to the a back to the dorian the a above it what is that well it's the we know that that's going to fit be the fifth seven note away perfect fifth and uh and uh, how do we know that? Because if I go the inverse A to D, that's five notes away, and that would be a perfect fourth. Therefore, the inverse is 12 minus five, seven note away, perfect fifth. So top to bottom, five note away, perfect fourth, bottom to top, seven note away, uh, perfect fifth. Okay, and we also know that the fifth of the Dorian is two minus one is one, plus five is six, so it would be the sixth of the relative major, which I know I would play a minor chord from because the two, three, six would be minor chords. Beyond that, I know it's the Aeolian mode, which would have all the minor intervals that I can build off of the A. Where's the A located? Or where's the minor located? Or Aeolian or the sixth mode? It's not in the house because it's a minor. Therefore, in the house analogy, it's hanging on its own in the flat part is what we're looking at. And in the hamburger analogy, it's on it's in the meat uh of the hamburger which would be the middle of the hamburger which is easier to see over here because it's not cut in half okay now let's let's build some chords off of that so i know i would build a minor chord if i go if i go now to the minor mode just to see the same shape but put the minor on top remember all of this is basically just building the minor mode with the one two is the nine three four is the eleven five six is the 13 seven right and if i go down to the aeolian same shape uh did, did, where's the aeolian mixolydian minor here it is so same shape but now that this is the one right so now i've got i have it going this way same thing going this way it's the same order except again we skipped every other note here and the two 11 and 13 is equivalent uh, to the two, the nine, eleven, thirteen is equivalent to the two, four, and six. So that gives us our our nice picture. So now I have my, there's my my root there. So the one, the first way we'd normally build a chord from it is we would lean it forward and get my minor chord construction, which would be like the E shape. The E shape uh, minor chord would look like that. Boom, bar chord. So that's the first thing we would typically look at. And we can see here that this is a five note away, uh, a seven note away, perfect fifth. There's the octave. There's the, uh, the three note away minor, three note away minor third. Here's another five note away, uh, perfect fifth. And then the, the root once again. Okay, so let's delete this. And then, so that's cool. So what can I do with that? Like, what if I wanted to add, like, what if I wanted to get funky or something and add like the seven? Well, it's a minor seven because it's a minor mode. So it should be a 10 note away minor seven. I typically see that as being right there, right? So now, so now I could say I can drop this back to here because there's my minor seven, which is right there. So I can go from this shape and drop the pinky and then, then and I can bar that whole thing off and now I've got my minor seven in there and I still got everything else I need plus the seven, the minor seven. So that's kind of cool because of course then I can go from my major and this is that's true with all the minors. All the minors have the same minor seven. 
which is not the true with the majors where you have the, the four, you know, related to the major key or the, you can call it the major scale, the one, the four, Lydian have a, a different major than the Mixolydian, right? But All right, so that's cool. What if I wanted to add like the nine? So now I'm like, okay, I wanna add the nine, dude. And the nine is equivalent to uh, the second. So it's gonna be a B. So now I wanna, add, so normally when I'm thinking about a minor uh, nine, I'm usually thinking, uh, uh, Wait, a nine is equivalent to a two. So normally I'm thinking a two is right here, right? So that's something I can obviously do if I'm playing this bar chord. I can alter. I can't play it at the same time, but it's nice to know that that is there, which I probably know by the shape. And then I've got, but where else could I find a two at? So there's a two like way up here. Oh. Uh, what did I do? Let's take this G, let's put it back here. That's my normal bar shape. And then I have a two, which is a B here. I've got one like way out there. That's not reachable, is it? Maybe. <laughs> so now I have an a one this would be a one five two and i probably can't get back to that c maybe I, if i borrow that if i borrow that nicely i'd like to get that c in there to get the three that's doable that's totally doable so it's like and then i could drop this Get the two. Uh, I kind of like it. I'll have to. I'll play with that. Maybe I'll toy with that later. And then, uh, then there's another two, like back here, behind the C. So we've got a two. So I could try to like. So I've got like, I could still pick up my five right there. And so I could do that and try to mute. But I could play the G out. Or what is that, a D? That's cool, that's the 11. The open 11 string, or I could try to mute. So now I'm playing this, I'm picking up that two with my pointer and this is my middle and then I'm reaching up to this one this one with my pinky so eh. and then and then if I went to the nine which is equivalent to the four so the nine is equivalent to the four which would be right underneath it usually if I play the one right underneath it, then I'm going to lose the E, which is the fifth, but that's okay because I have a fifth down here if I play the whole bar chord. So then I could pick up this A still if I wanted to. So when I'm doing this, I have this. If I drop the pinky, we reveal the seven. If I drop the ring finger, I reveal the eleven, which is equivalent to the four. So now I've got this, I've got the A to the s revealing the seven, picking up the two. Anyway, uh, and then, and now I've got the revealing the four. is hurting that's too stretchy too stretchy the hand is protesting 
Okay, let's go to the F, which would be equivalent to the 6. And so the 6 would be a minor 6, which I typically think of as like, well, there's my uh, bar chord, or my, my <laughs> power chord, and that's the 5th. The minor 6 is right here. So there's my F. So I could say, is it possible for me to lose this? one and pick that one up so now I'm like okay totally doable so now I'm saying I had this and now I'm gonna switch these two fingers so now I lose the fifth but I still have a fifth down here if I need it I'm okay to drop it really if I have to so that's pretty cool so now I've got the normal, adding the seven, adding the four, adding the two, which I have to use this finger, and then adding the uh, ele or uh, the thirteen. Should add a little bit more tension back to normal. All right, all right. That's enough of that. Let's go, let's lean backwards. If I lean back, we have the one, the three is over here, and then the five, that's like our G minor shape from a caged system, if you think about it that way. So we've got that, dude. Do, do, do it, so I could go boom, boom, boom. I like that shape, I've been messing with that more. You could also play the open G here if you wanted to, all these open would fit. But that open G now, would be the seventh, which is interesting. Or you can lock it down, you can try to bar it off. But then if you bar that off, you don't want to bar this one off, which is kind of hard. But then you get that other A, but it's kind of cool to either mute it or let it ring out as a G to get that seven. So we have that, okay. So that's how I can get that G in there. Is there some way else I can get the G in there without cheating with an open string? I could be like that. So that's a cool shape. So now I lose my fifth, but I can be like, boom, boom. And I can do that anywhere. So now I've got the one, three dropping the fifth, but I got the five over here. And then there's not much I can do with this finger uh, from there, because it's like in no man's land. I can pick up like the B string. I could pick up that B, which would be the nine. So I've got an, I've got this A, that C, that G, and then I've got a, an extra finger I could pick up that B with, which would be the nine if I wanted to. I don't need to though. Uh, then, well, what if I want to pick, so that's the nine, so I just saw the nine right there, so I could pick up that nine. If I was playing a normal lean back like this, then how could I pick up the nine? The nine would be difficult to pick up. I almost have to do that. So if I just want to pick up the nine normally, I could go, I could go this here, and then instead of hitting that G, I could just mute that string with my with my barred off finger here muting the D or I can let the D ring out which would be the 11 adding the 11 in there okay and then I could say okay well what if I take that that normal shape A C E and then I'm like I want to add uh, and 11 without like cheating, which is equivalent to uh, the four. So now that would be right underneath it. So that would be dropping the third, which is kind of a problem, but I still have the fifth. So I could do that. I could do, I could do boom, 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 and still pick up the fifth. 
I'd like to get a third in there, but that's not doable because a third it's kind of sounds like Superman song. <laughs> Isn't that in like Superman 3 or something? I don't know. But, uh, no, wait a second. Yeah. So then, I, so that's that. I can't get to this. Uh, this finger is useless. Uh, here, I could get that B again. I can also still add the 9 if I was to do that shape. If I wanted to. Okay. All right, let's stop it there. Let's go to the next one. I'm, I'm gonna have to stop soon. This is hurting my head. My head is hurting. Your head is a wussy. Tough it out. Okay. Whatever. Let's go to the, <laughs> let's go back to the G. Uh, here. Okay. That's gonna be a five note away, perfect fourth. Five note away, perfect fourth. How do I know? Because if I go this way, it would be five, six, seven. So that would be my power chord. Seven note away, perfect fifth. Therefore, the inverse is 12 minus seven, five, five note away, perfect fourth. Okay. I also know that the fourth is uh, two minus one is one plus four is five. Therefore, it's the fifth position relative to our Rosetta stone in the key of C. And so I would be playing a major chord with a major third because the one, four, five are major. Beyond that, I know it's the Mixolydian, which has a distinctive minor seven. All other intervals are the same as the major. Okay, and the Mixolydian is located not in the house, uh, but even though it's a major key because it's got that minor seven, it hangs out with the minors, the minor keys. I always think the minors, <laughs> anyways, it's up here, it's in the middle, it's in the flat or in the hamburger analogy, it's in the middle of a hamburger. All right, let's go to that one. So remember, this, this numbering system is mixed lidding. Here's the one, here's the two is equivalent to the nine, the three, and then the four is equivalent to the 11, the five, and then the six is the 13, and then the seven. But let's go to the Phrygian mode where I've color coded it with the one, three, five of the key. So, so remember G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. G, A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, and then G starts over. <laughs> okay. So uh, let's do this one. So now we're on a major. So if I was like, all right, we'll say this is gonna be our normal bar chord, E-shaped bar chord, boom, shakalaka. Do I need it on the root? I've been, well, it's just, I don't really need it. Well, let's keep it there. Uh, and then, so that's our bar chord leaning forward that we would make from it. As we know, boom. Cool. But now, I'm like, that's not good enough because I want to add a seven. So a seven uh, it's going to be out of my arm. It's getting tired of hanging out there. So here's the seven. Now the fifth, this is where it comes into play. The fifth is that dominant seven. So I know where's my seven normal. It, it's a dominant. It's a, it's a minor, it's a minor seven, like the minors. So it's a 10 note away minor seven because it's the fifth. So that's the distinctive interval. So that means I can lift up, if I'm playing this, I can just simply lift up this finger and boom, there's the F. Now I can't do that if I'm on the key of C, if I was up here and I played the same bar chord, which would be boom, 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 boom. And I lifted up this finger, I would reveal that note, which isn't colored because it's not in the key. Although if you're doing a bluesy thing, it could still work. Because notice if I'm doing something parallel, like 
if I'm doing this. It still sounds good even though they're not those two things are not in the same key. It almost sounds like you're that almost sounds you can think of it as though you're going from mixolydian in the one and switching to mixolydian in the second. Everything is parallel to each other. But if you want everything in the same key related to each other in the related key, then you can't do that because this would have a dominant seven and you don't have the dominant seven here, you'd have the major uh, seven. So you'd have to play right, or something like that. So anyways, so that's cool. All right, uh, so we have that on the fifth. And what about like the nine? So the nine is equivalent to, uh, the nine is equivalent to the two. So I know I can always reach up to it. So that's nice to know I could do. So that's cool. And then, but where's another nine? I have, usually the nine is back here. When, I, when we play our shapes, which is kind of inconvenient because I have to reach backwards. To get to the nine. No, that's, yeah, the nine is, e the nine is, e is equivalent. It's a six note away. It's a nine note away, major six. Now wait a sec, no. The nine is equivalent to the two. <laughs> the nine is equivalent to the two, uh, which is a two note away. So that, there we go, that makes sense, okay. So if I was to do that, I'm limiting my options. I could still reach the, I could still reach the fifth. I can reach the, that and this with my pinky. <laughs> I could mute the D, or the open D, or I can play it out. And that's cool if I play it out in this case, because it's it happens to be the fifth, and that works. I play the open D. All right, what if I wanted to play like the the 11, which is, equi is equivalent to uh, uh, the four? So that would be usually like right underneath. So now I could say, instead of playing this, D, I can go right underneath there and pick up that one. So now I've got this, but I lift up this finger. So if I'm playing this shape, I have this. I can reveal the seven. Or I can reveal the four. Or I can add the two. Notice that adding the two up here is totally doable because actually I have another G down here. Uh, so that's like still, I'm still in the same key. It's not like I'm losing the root. Anyway, uh, so then I could go to the 13, which is the equivalent to uh, the nine and say, could I add like uh, a nine, a nine, a f it's a normally, the ninth is here. I think of it as behind, which is again a kind of an issue because I could reach back here to get that G. And then if I reach back there, I can still reach this one with my pinky. So I could do that. Uh, is there another, so that would be, is there another nine? There's a nine out here, that's a bit of a reach because the minor nine is reachable, but that major nine is like, uh, so I've got, I can get there, I could do it, but then I lose the ability to, to do just about anything else. So I can get that, if I get that nine, then I can't really, I don't really need that G. I could maybe still get the F over here, if I borrow that. F, which is a which is my seven. Could 
I do anything with this finger, I could pick up this G. I already have a G though. It's not very helpful. What about this note? C. Hey, what? I don't know. That's too stretchy. My finger hurts. All right, let's go back the other way. What if I went this way into my like G shape from a cage system major? I could go back this way. Be like, boom, boom. That's just my major thing. I don't have to grab this one. That's just my G shape. All right, so then, all right, what if I added, what if I wanted to say throw in my seven? Well, that's cool because I can put that. That's the F, which again is a minor seven. So a lot of people probably don't, may not do that so much when they're playing in this mode, but it's right there, right? So I can still pull my pinky down here and the G on the bottom. So you've got your, you've got, whoops, wait a sec. You've got your normal G major. Put your pinky down here. And then adding the seven. That seven wouldn't be, you can't do that if it was the key of C, like, because again, we already talked about that. I gotta stop soon. This is, let's add the nine, which is gonna be the A. So if I got this lean back chord, usually the nine is equivalent, the nine is equivalent to the second. So if I'm playing this, I could like play this. up here to the nine it's uh, and I still have a G because I'm playing this open G down here but obviously the heavy note now is an A and then I could grab a nine like down here so I could let this G not ring out and grab that nine. It's the best fingering for that, maybe that. Anyway, and then what about the, the 11? 11 is equivalent to uh, the 5. So the 11, normally I would be thinking about the 11. That's right there. So if I'm leaning back, I could go. So instead of getting this 5 again, uh, instead of getting that D, I go up to, now wait a second. Uh, I'm looking at the 11, which is equivalent to, oh no, it's the perfect fourth. So that would be right underneath. So now I'd lose, so now I want to pick up this C, and then I'd lose the third, but I have another open B down here that I could play, and then I have my open G still, so I could just play these two, because it's in an open position. All right, I'm gonna stop it there. I'm with my shoulders hurting. Yeah, and I'm tired. I'm gonna stop. You haven't even gotten through all of the, I know. I think I'm gonna skip the rest of them too. Oh my goodness. We're gonna go to Phrygian. We'll go to Phrygian next time. Uh, so that's what we'll do.